Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to part one of the Majestic Dash AQ400 tutorial for FS the Crew, or FS the Crew tutorial for the Dash AQ400. <laughs> Better said. Um, yeah, we're here standing in Gothenburg, Sweden. We're flying up to Oslo with Widero. Um and uh, yeah, we'll be discussing the exact procedures on how to operate this aircraft with FS the Crew. First things first, I already did a flight plan. Um, I was thinking, should I make a part where we just do flight planning and get everything set up before we start flying? Um, things we should probably do. Um, however, I decided to cut that out because I think that's information that we don't need necessarily. Although there are some few things that I will mention now, um, fairly quickly, and we'll go over before we start flying, really. Um, a good habit to do before you start the flight sim or start efforts to crew is to get your charts going uh, make sure you have all your charts ready for the entire flight and that you have your flight plan done um, so that saves you a lot of time and a lot of, a lot of effort so that's exactly what we're going to do we already did our flight plan um, it is right here and if you know anything about the majestic you'll also have to load up the majestic control panel and then load the aircraft up through this and we'll do that in just a second here our flight plan is done uh, we know what we're doing um, I'm, I'm assuming you guys know what to, how to do your own flight plans um, if you don't I would recommend watching a tutorial on it. Um, Simbrief is a good freeware tool and PFPX is a good payware tool. And I use PFPX um, myself. And so with the weather, with the information that we have available to us by the flame plan, we'll be selecting our charts for that. But first things first, I want to get the chart information up uh, or the air dome information, sorry. Um, so we know the entire, so we have the air, entire airport in sight. Um, also the, the, uh, sorry, before takeoff to runway 03, or departing runway 03, so we're going to take that so we know the taxi procedure for this. We're currently at, uh, stand 32, so we can expect to, uh, tax, uh, to push back tail left and then taxi out via Lima down to runway 03. Um, any other information, that's basically all up to you if you think there's anything else you need. We definitely need the SID. And another recommendation, pretty much for every flight, uh, I would recommend to also put in the return approach uh, chart. Um, we'll get to that in just a second. So the SID for us is Tiza to Romeo. So let's take, uh, let's find it. Tiza to Romeo is right there. So we're going to take a quick look. It's always good to take a quick peek just to get some uh, information out. So initial climb 5,000. We have that now in the head, in our head. <laughs> Transition altitude is 5,000. That's good to know. And just read every single point here. Our nav is required, which we do have today. Contact get the board control um, when instructed by a tower. Um, that's just good to know for ATC. If airborne RNAV equipment fails, inform ATC as soon as possible for radar victoring. Um, So all this information is relevant. And um, also we'll have to, because this airplane does not use, uh, do any speed restrictions, you need to make sure that if there are any speed restrictions that you can, um, that you have those in your, in the back of your head as well and know that you don't cross them. Uh, max speed restrictions 250 below 10, flight level 100, which is definitely something we don't have to worry about. Um, our cruise level might not even be 250. Um, the chances of it being 250 is pretty much zero. Um, just to, let you know on that that is done and now we want a, a plan for the return just in case we have an engine failure or any kind of failure that we need to where we need to return to the airfield so our expected uh, approach back is at the ILS runway 03 so we're going to keep that also here um, so we have everything that we need we need have everything for the ground so for taxiing everything for departure everything for uh, return same thing we'll do because this flight is a very short flight we'll do the same thing for um, Oslo as well right right off the get-go also a good habit of doing it right now. So Looney for Lima, we're going to take a look. Transition altitude obviously is set by ATC, but it's normally, I think, 5,000 feet as well. Um, if you don't know, just check a chart. Uh, just a, Sorry, a SID, uh, a SID chart, and it's actually 7,000 feet. So there we go. Um, so that's there, and we're expecting ILS-01 right, so I'm going to put that in as well. And then taxi routing, so airport information. Um, my, my parking stands would be good to know. And um, anything else that I need to know for arrival. So you can check your arrival information. That might be helpful to know. But that's all up to you uh, to get that going. But like I said, the main purpose here is to get all the charts that we need for today. 
and and we'll need and the reason I want to go over all this really quickly is just to let you know that we'll actually be using all of these. Um, we'll even use this one, though we will not simulate an engine failure in return, and um, we will need to use this just in case to program a few things into the FMC or within the radios. When that is done, I'm gonna go and put that to the side. We now the next thing I'm, I would do is load up the aircraft itself. What I like to what I'd like to do is I like to reset my cargo weight uh, from the last flight as well as my passenger weight from the last flight and just put in the fuel that we need. So here it says takeoff fuel. So this might be a little bit confusing. Make sure that if you put in the takeoff fuel here, that you actually put in the release fuel and not the takeoff minimum takeoff fuel. Um, I like to um, yeah. You should definitely keep that in mind. I'm gonna put 2200, but our trip fuel will be 760. So I'm gonna put 760. Calculate that, and um, we'll see that our zero fuel weight here, or our uh, CG is a bit in the front. That's because our uh, dry operating index is at 87. Of course, this is going to be a little bit different for you. You don't have to change this at all. You can keep it as it is. Um, so that's checked, and now the goal is to make this aircraft a bit more central, so not as front heavy as it normally is empty or with fuel. Because the fuel is actually very well balanced, so the fuel is pretty much center center of the aircraft, and so uh, it should not cause any discrepancies there. Plus, it's also an, a value that you cannot change. Um, you know the location of, whereas passengers and cargo you can obviously change if it should be in the front to make it more front heavy, or in the back to make it more back heavy. And today we're 53 passengers, so we're gonna set up 21st here, which means we'll be a bit more back heavy. In fact, very back heavy, and we'll put. 24 in the front. So we're a bit front heavy, so I'm gonna put uh, the rest of the people, which is uh, nine in the back. And now you can see that we're pretty balanced now. Now we need to put in the cargo weight. What I like to do is I like to check the zero fuel weight on the flight plan and then compare it to the zero fuel weight mass or zero fuel mass uh, with what has been calculated here. So we're missing about uh, what is that? 72, 74, 74, 2,074. That's quite a bit. So I'm going to put 74 in here just so I'd have that out of the head, out of the, out of the way. And I'm going to have to balance 2,000 out. So I'm going to put 1,000 in the front and 1,000, oh, sorry, in the back and 1,000 in the front. Okay, that looks all right. So I'm going to probably do 74 in the back. So this is all trial and error. Just to get the aircraft as balanced as possible, and that's perfect right there. So calculate that once you're ready and have everything set up. Just check your mass again. Oh, I put 1,000 too much. Oh, I did. Oh, shoot. Okay, that's easy. Easy fix. 500 and 500. Yeah, I miscalculated that for some reason. All right. So it's still balanced. Calculate that. And then once you're ready, send it to the flight uh, flight sim. You'll see that the sim pause and just unpause, and you'll see it. Load up. I would not recommend closing this panel. It is possible that when you close it right now, that the aircraft will unload itself again. Um, so what I, just press it to, um, to minimize it, and uh, that's enough. Now we keep it up, just to just in case. That's pretty much the first. That's all we need to do before we start PFP. Uh, sorry, not PFX. Before we start uh, FS the crew and actually now we have everything set up. We're ready for departure. Uh, not ready for departure. We're ready to set the plane up. And that's exactly what we we will do now. Um, so also at this point, if you're one of those people that use uses, for example, me, use Sim Toolkit Pro or Project Fly, now would be a good time to start it, just in case you forget. Because I know I like to forget, so I like to remind myself and you guys, don't forget it. Okay, so when we start to start the uh, the pre-flight events, you just have to press PF events right here. Pretty simple, self-explanatory. That's all you have to do. And the uh, and the and the uh, procedures will begin, and you'll have to start to do your things. The FO will do his things, and uh, that's it's as simple as that. Now, of course, what do we do? Well, the, in the in this iteration for the Q400, the timings are it starts at around 30 minutes, or it starts exactly at 30 minutes, which means you have 30 minutes um, to set up the aircraft until you start pushing back, or you're expected to push back which is plenty of time with, for this aircraft. Unfortunately, it's not plenty of time to explain everything that we're doing. But you'll see that you'll see that we will cross a few time we'll cross some timings or we'll, we'll be a bit behind schedule and you'll see me cut to a certain time and tell you what you should do at that point. If that makes sense. But don't worry, I'm I hope to make it as 
as simple as possible for you to understand what is to be done. So we're going to start just to save a little bit of time. I'm going to let you know what we're going to do in the first uh, couple of minutes. So the first couple of minutes, we're going to ver verify the registration of the aircraft, just like in real life with our flight plan. That's, that's, that's something you can do if you like, uh, nothing important. Verify that the units of the aircraft and the flight plan uh, correspond with one another. So this depends on what you've set it to. So if you've obviously have the aircraft set to pounds, but your flight plan is set in kilograms, that's obviously a discrepancy and you should make sure that your flight plan or your aircraft is the same, has the same values or same uh, system, value system as um, the other part. Um, if you use GSX, you could request catering or fueling at this point just to simulate it. Um, I will not uh, provide GSX information in this tutorial um, simply because I don't have much experience with this airplane and GSX and I, I wanna, I'm, not, I'm a bit afraid that it might break it, but you should be able to do it, no problem. Um, then the very first things, that should, only, that should not even take a minute, that should take like 10 seconds to check all that. Once we get that done, um, you now would have to read the the flight deck power-up checklist, which is provided to you by FS the crew as well. If you check the tutorials or the manuals, it is provided by you so you can follow that. Of course, I'll be going into more detail with it since there are a few things that it does not mention that real pilots would do or real airlines would do. And that's just something I want to tell you. Um, talking about real procedures, I do want to mention that the Q400 especially has quite a bit of different, uh, quite a few different um, SOPs or different procedures that airlines like to do um, and I will if I do remember um, I will mention what differences there are in certain airlines and what certain airlines do or not I will not specify what airline does this but I will say that some airlines do it this way some airlines do it this way and uh, so you can do it however you like um, I have my own way of doing it uh, meaning I do it one airline's way, but I don't do it the other ways. I don't do it both normally. I always just choose one airline that I want to do it by, and then use it. So just just in case there, you notice that oh, I've never, I've not seen it be done like this. Most likely it's because um, the way I'm doing it or asking you to do it is from a different airline. So, but trust me, I'm not making anything up. That's also a big disclaimer that nothing that I do here I try to make up. Um, I I'm very enthusiastic in making things as realistic as I can. That's just how I am. And so trust me when I say that my passion for being as realistic as possible will show in these tutorials. Anyways, let's get going. So again, we're going to be reading the flight deck power-up checklist that is read silently by you and you'll be following it and doing everything that's on that checklist. It's very simple. It's a read and do checklist. But we'll be going over it now in a second. So let's head into the flight deck and we'll start the PF events by pressing PF events, obviously. Hey Captain, how are you today? You'll see that it starts at 30 minutes, and we can now start our things. So verify units, everything's checked, everything's good, registration is checked as well. We should be good to go. So the flight deck power-up checklist is as follows. Aircraft flight log, you would check that. Then you want to verify that circuit breakers, which are simulated in this airplane, you would only check your side of the circuit breakers and make sure that there are no white indications, meaning that they're popped out. Next, obvious, obvious things, gear is down, your lever is down, the weather radar here is off. We then head to the overhead and we can now turn on batteries. Turning on the batteries is always from right to left, so the main uh, the battery master and then from right to left. Turning them off is the opposite, so from left to right. Don't turn them on, one at a time. Make sure that the bus main bus tie switch is tied. Turn, uh, open up the engine intakes. They will not open until we have some external power available or APU available or a DC generator available. Um, but go ahead and open them now or press them to open now um, for the walk around. Position lights to on. If it's nighttime, you can also turn on the logo light and the wing inspection lights for the uh, walk around. Make sure that the flight deck displays are turning on and we can also turn on the FMSs as well as the radios. Set this to both. Uh, the difference between on and both, if you set both on both of them, uh, that means that whatever you do on this side will also be done on this side. So if you, but only with the active frequency. So you'll see that if I tune 110.0, you'll see that it's not tuned here, but as soon as I switch it, it will also switch on this FMC. That's just a little t helpful tip. So always use, pretty much all airlines use both. 
on this case in this case um, but like I said I don't want to go in too deep into what what the system does since I'm expecting you to already know how to use the aircraft I'm out for the walk around All right, he's now doing his walk around want to verify that the uh, standby and PTU pumps are off these two right here the emergency brake is set to park and this is where we would now establish um, a, a generator so either APU we would start either the APU or the external power um, I'm gonna use the external power because it's available the, t the only time you would use or start the APU really is if the external power is not available so we don't have an external power or if the outside air temperature is above 18 degrees Celsius um, obviously to cool down the cabin a little bit we're gonna use external power for this case so go ahead and turn that on Okay, once that is established, um, there is a procedure. If you're using external power, there is some airlines like to turn off the batteries to uh, save wear and tear because they it is possible because when they charge that they um, they do wear down and they lose their life expectancy. So, like I'll, I'll actually do this. Airlines actually turn off the batteries. So again, from left to right when turning them off when you when you're using external power. Otherwise, if you're using APU, keep them on. Alright, next you want to check the safety equipment and docks, make sure they're uh, checked and uh, nothing is out of the ordinary, but of course this is a flight sim so we don't have anything like that. And the last thing we do for the, uh, the uh, flight deck power up checklist is check the nav database, make sure it's up to date if you're using Eric cycles and then once that's checked, accept it on both. Um, let me go ahead and brighten up the displays here. Just to get a little bit more light. Okay. So once you're done with that, you are then expected to do the originating flow, which is basically your pre-flight flow, and we'll do that right now. So verify that the gravity gear extension door here is closed, as well as everything here is in the normal position and guarded. Verify that the hatch is closed. Check that the oxygen pressure on all three is green. You have three indications, three green indications. One, two, three. That is checked. We'll set our side the misters um, to open. We'll then go on the FM, uh, sorry, the MMFD page. So you go to System, press Door, and just recycle this switch so you're back on the electrical page on the right side. So we have now the door page available to us um, to keep that monitored. If you now we would request some ATC clearance or we not ATC sorry that's the wrong one. We would now check our ATIS information or so fuel in, uh, weather information. And you can do that either via here, so via ACARS, basically, or you can do it via VATSIM or any other way that you like to do it. That's up to you. I'm going to do it via Unilink. There we go. So our um, altimeter is 1006, and I'm going to translate that to all of my um, my displays. So 1006 and 1006. Set once, twice, and three times. All right, now we're doing the overhead panel scan. Um, so just check everything is set as required. Everything's fine. This stays open for the walk around still, and everything is fine. And the majestic, or not the majestic, in the Q400, you do a W instead of up from up to down or from down to up. Um, so you do a little W. So landing lights are off. Pressurization is checked. This is fine. Do a flight recorder test. Make sure that the indication then goes out. And then release it again. That's fine. If you have, if you've, um, this is very important. If you have the APU running and you've, and you've done the APU start uh, procedure, you've already done the fire test. Do not do it now again, because that will shut down the APU. Just to keep that in mind. But because we didn't start the APU, we'll do the APU fire test now. Do the respective fire tests. Okay, lights are fine, APU is off, set to normal, normal, that's off. Set your landing altitude to your current, uh, to your, sorry, to your destination landing elevation, um, which is in Oslo, 680 feet. Well, I'll set this up one notch, there we go. This is set to auto and everything else is fine, everything else here is fine as well. Next, go down here, you do not arm the emergency lights, nor do you set the seatbelt signs, that will, that 
uh, the FL will do that for you. So no smoking signs on. Do an advisory test. Make sure all the lights illuminate and work. Then do a caution test. That's good. This set to the middle position, but this is set as required. Pack should be auto. This set as required. Make sure this is min. Recirculation fan set to on, and the bleed should be off. And here, external power AC does not get used. Once that is done, we now go to our left side here, and we want to make sure that the GPWS switch is guarded and extinguished. Do a takeoff config test. Make sure that works, which it does. We now do an ADC 1 and 2 test. So ADC 1, so any system with 1 is always the left side and 2 is always the right side. Um, so we'll do that now. You verify... Oh. Oh, 1, verify the indications and you should hear an overspeed in, uh, warning in just a second. Number 2. You'll see the indications now on this side. Stall warning. I'm not sure if they actually make this. No, okay. Good, number two. Okay, and that's that is required. Nose with steering should be off. We'll reset our decision height to zero. We'll set this to MDA. Um, check everything is fine here. And these display look good. We'll now head over to the MCP and make sure that this is set to taxi. There are no abnormal indications. Uh, the clock is set as required. We're gonna set our nav source to FMS one and this side to FMS two. We're gonna go ahead and arm the yawn damper and everything else stays as it is. We now proceed to the uh, front panel. So ISIS, make sure that the integrated standby uh, altimeter, that it does not have any flags, abnormal flags. You want to check that the landing gear again is down, the indications are normal. Set your GPS uh, landing flap to your um, return flap. So if the if you're going to be f landing in level 2 conditions or even level 3 conditions, I would recommend using flap 35. Not me, but real pilots recommend to use the flap 35. If these conditions do not exist, uh, and your but your runway length is um, at or above 2133 meters you can then select flaps 15 for landing instead we're going to use flaps 35 for the for the return just in case make sure that these are off next we head down here make sure that the ahrs panel here and here have no lights you can also hear the Flying fo slow. do his stuff Pull make up. sure that these are pulled in so they're not pushed out or pulled out sorry Terrain. they're pushed in not pulled Terrain. out Fuel control as normal. Pull up. Everything here is normal and set. Here you can set your uh, ICAS as you wish. So I'm gonna set this to 10. I'm gonna select airport VOR2, um, and uh, that's good. Okay. Check that your uh, emergency brake is set to park. Your gust lock is in. Your fuel, uh, sorry, your thrust levers are set to disc, and your uh, condition levers to fuel off. Make sure your flap indication or your flap is set to zero and indicating zero as well. And now once you've checked these things, items, you'll now do an auto feather test. Okay. We'll press the auto feather and you should now see auto feather test in progress. Auto feather select should come up. And after a few seconds, you see you should see up trim appear. And after this whole entire system is completed and has passed, you should see auto feather test passed. Once that is complete, we can then deselect the auto feather system. Okay, auto feather test has passed, so we can deselect auto feather and we'll continue now down here. Um, one of the first things we'll do is we'll do a PA test. We we'll set this to PA, press PA, and you should hear the ding. And you can also see that this triggers FS the crew to give you some PA announcements that you can do. I'm gonna go and set this to init, or sorry, to interphone for the ground crew. Next, set your VH, VHF frequencies as you wish or require for the uh, flight today, and we'll now set our VORs as well. I'm gonna go and reset my transponder code as well for this flight. Although we did not get ATC clearance yet, and we'll do that. I mean, I will not show that, but I'll tell you when you can expect to do so. Okay, so let's say VHF frequencies have been set, so I'm gonna go and set 
standard VATSIM frequency of 1 to 2 decimal 8 in the com. And now for the view bar frequency, this is where we have done our uh, charts or checked our charts. So we need to see if any of the charts require any VORs or have any VORs just in case we need to use them. And we do have LAV, and that's pretty much the only one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put LAV, which is frequency 114.6 on the left side. Put that in. And then for the tur uh, turnaround, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to ILS03. And I'm going to select, I also see that uh, Landveta Sierra Lima is also used here. So I'm going to go ahead and put the ADF in as well. So th 342. Okay, but our ILS frequency, in case we need to return and fly the ILS, is 110.3 at a course of 23. So we're going to put that in on standby. So it was 110. Decimal three. And we're gonna put our course on our left side. Um, here, so the way we do it, we're gonna go to nav real quick. Hold down format. And we can now put in the course, which is 023. Hold down format again to get rid of it. Sometimes it doesn't work, you have to redo it. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna put this back to source page. Okay, so if, so the uh, frequencies are, are set as required. This is set to NAV for obvious reasons. We're gonna go and reset our trims to a neutral position. Everything else is set here, everything is fine. Weather should be standby, which is something he does though. You don't have to do this. And the second frequency, he sets this to on. Um, however, only only the master needs to set it to both, as you can see. So we'll keep it on on if that's what he prefers. Okay, there's one more thing we need to do real quick um, before we are completed with our originating flows, and that is a trim test. So you use your elevator trim. You should hear that chiming. Press elevator sh uh, trim shutdown. You should then see shut it down. Uh, see it shut down. Turn it back on. You should then see it come up. So now that now the originating checks are complete. At 24 minutes, the flight attendant will ask if. She can start boarding, and all you need to respond for her is to say yes. At that time, you can also request uh, GSX to start boarding as well. Hi guys, can we start boarding now? Yes. Thank you, I'll back with a load sheet later. At 20 minutes, you will expect the FO to return from his walk around. At that time, uh, what you will do is if you require level 2 uh, anti-ice for the departure, keep the engine intakes open for the duration. If you do not require level 2 anti-ice for the departure, which we'll discuss in more detail later in the tutorial, you can go ahead and close them. All right, so we're just about reaching 22 minutes. That's the time where we are expected to complete our or originating flows, and we would now move on to the FMS. It actually goes really quick. Um, um, at the end of the, every uh, at the end of the tutorial, uh, at least every part, you'll also see me do a complete flight without talking about anything really and just doing it, so you know how I do it um, the most efficient way. Um, and you'll see that it actually goes fairly quick. Um, it just it takes time to explain everything. So now we do our flight plan. And also here's again, very different ways of how different airlines do it. And here's how I do it. And I've, um, of course, 
this inf- I do it because of an airline doing it. So it's not just me making it up. It's, it's how some airlines do it or some pilots do it. Um, so I like to put in the flight plan first. Oh, I mean, that you're supposed to do the flight plan first anyways, but this is how I put in the flight plan. So first, I'll put in my arrival, uh, sorry, my departure, and we'll accept that. Then I like to put in the departure, so you go to menu, departure. Today we're departing runway 3. We're departing via the ESA to Romeo, so that is number 8, so enter 8. And no transition, so we'll put that in the flight plan. Next, from Sabak. We're expected to take an airway, so we go to list, airway, and from Sabak we're taking uh, airway Lima 997, which is number two, and to Lunep, which is number four. Okay, so once you've put in the entire flight plan, so I've put that's pretty much all there is to the flight plan. I now put in the arrival, so I go back to menu, arrival, and now I'm going to put an Echo November Golf mic. Enter, accept, runway 01 right today, number 2. Our star will be Looney for Lima, which is number 9, via runway 1 right, number 2. And it's going to be an ILS. And now we need to check what our transition altitude, uh, not transition altitude, but our transition is. And according to my flight plan, it is in SUF. Again, here I am expecting you to know what kind of transitions you're supposed to put in and things like that. Next, we're going to check in the flight plan, make sure there are no discontinuities. If there are, see if you can d- get rid of them. And in this case, we can. So you can see Lunips twice, which means um, we definitely need to connect these two. And of course, you'd also check your flight plan, seeing if that these two should be disconnected. Uh, should be connected. Here in this case, um, these need to be connected as well. It's also part of the flight plan, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And now they're together. If there's a no link that should be in there, for example, for a go around or for a vector uh, approach. Just click on the no link once, and it, you see that it stops blinking. It, this could help maybe with your nerves in case it's annoying. This little tip. Um, next thing we're gonna put in, we're gonna go to the very last page. You'll see that we end up in the flight plan summary page. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put in our estimated time departure in UTC, which according to our flight plan is 1245. Uh, zero minute delay or zero hour delay and slow. that is all we need to do there okay um, once we've done that our next thing the next thing I'll do is I'm gonna go to menu again I'm gonna put in my flight plan wins so according to PFPX I just need to put in Zenta and so to put in wins I'm gonna put in you just select the just like where you need to put it in press enter to put in and the uh, the uh, the speed as well so first the direction then the wind at uh, the speed and that's how you do it and you can do that with any waypoint you want and that is done once that is complete just go to cross fill and cross fill the flight plan to the second fms as well we now will go to the fuel page on this side and because we did not get the load sheet yet which we will get at around seven minutes uh, we will put the information then in but i'll check the flight plan on this side make sure it's filled in which it is all right, so we're approaching 15 minutes. At 15 minutes plus, you're expected to do the departure briefing, which we'll now discuss. So briefing, uh, here you can see the departure briefing, and here's a few things you need to set, and depending on these values, the FO will then do uh, his flows as required to meet these re- uh, requirements. So example, if you were to set 15, he will then set flaps 15 after, t- uh, after engine start, and so on and so forth. Um, so you need to make sure that is set um, properly. So we're at a gate, uh, sorry, we're at a stand, so you can choose gate or stand, very self-explanatory. ASDX should be a self-explanatory, that's ground radar, uh, Stockholm, it's not Stockholm, uh, Gothenburg does not use this. Um, for primary, f- uh, primary f- uh, nav source, we're using LNAV, so there's L- either LNAV, VOR, or heading select, we're using LNAV because it is an RNAV departure. De-icing, anti-icing levels. Um, here are the, so you can choose between level 1, level 2, and level one, 2 with de-icing. Um, we'll talk about de-icing in another part, in a supplementary procedure uh, part. Um, so we'll talk about that then. However, um, for now we're just talking about when should we use level 1 and when should we use level 2. So, level 1 
is the minimum so you should always use level one that's obvious only time you'd use level two when on the is when on the ground in icing conditions and or at lower than 10 degrees celsius or in flight at or below five degrees celsius so that means if basically um, if you're familiar with the other aircraft, so Boeing and aircraft, the Boeing aircraft or Airbus aircraft or any other, um, basically when icing conditions exist, which means visible moisture as well as 10 degrees Celsius or below. If that is the case, which I don't think is the case for us actually. Let's, oh, oh no, never mind. It is the case. It is the case. In that case, we will use uh, level two. There is visible moisture right here. Um, so visible moisture also means within a mile. So if there's visible moisture within a mile, of you, which it definitely is, uh, that's also icing conditions. So we'll use level two for today. And because we are choosing level two and we already knew this in the front, we kept our engine intakes open. Um, otherwise we would have closed them because engine intakes will be used for level two. Flaps five or 15. Um, flaps five is used for normal takeoff. Flaps 15 only used for runways below 1800 meters for takeoff. Um, that's not the case for us, so we'll use flaps five. Departure types, via said, you can either choose vectors as well. So in case it's, um, it makes sense that if it's via the SID, you're probably going to use LNAV. If it's uh, through heading select, you're most likely going to get vectored. So that, that that those two correlate in some ways. Takeoff power, we're going to use N top. Um, when would you use M top, which is this next option? M top you would only use if you have any large obstacles in the way when you're taking off. For example, a terrain or mountains, things like that. Um, and in real life. R top is really never used, pretty much, barely used. N top is normal, it's 90%, and that's what's used, like 99% of the time. Bleeds on or off. Now this is this depends on the aircraft type. So the Q400 has supplementary equipment that can be installed or purchased by the airline, and depending on the supplementary uh, parts that are installed, uh, will determine whether your bleeds are able to be on during takeoff, which. If they, ha if they are going to be on, they have to be on set to min. If the supplementary um, is not installed, uh, the bleeds will be off for takeoff. I generally always go with bleeds off because I don't know if Majestic have simulated the supplementary 21, it's called. Um, and because I don't know if they did, I'm going to assume that they haven't and keep the bleeds off for takeoff. Don't worry, this is something you don't, you don't, you personally don't have to worry about. All you have to worry about is do I keep it on or off and the FO will do it for you. Concerns, if there are any concerns for weather, the weather on both, so if weather should be on both displays, or if weather and terrain, so simultaneously, or terrain on both. Wh whatever your concerns are, if there are any concerns, put them on, but we don't have any concerns. No no dangerous weather, no dangerous terrain anywhere, so we're fine. Once that is complete, you can just select play brief, and he'll go through the briefing. If you do not want to go through this, you can just ask if he's ready for the departure briefing, and then ask for any questions. Are you ready for the departure brief? Go ahead. Any questions? No questions. And that will mean that the departure briefing is complete. So at around 10 minutes, which is very realistic in real life, at around 10 minutes before, um, you're expected to do the IFR clearance. So you request the ATC uh, IFR clearance. If with any clearance you got, you would then update any information. So your uh, transponder, uh, your, your frequencies per perhaps, um, altitude, maybe even nav source, things like that. Uh, you would just update the information that is suited for the departure. Once you've got clearance, that means, uh, and you've done that, we'll now set up the FCU as required. The so first thing that you should push is the toga switch. You'll see that wing level and go around are armed. And we will now select our altitude. So our initial climb today, as we saw in the chart, was 5,000. So I'm gonna set that in and always, for, always keep this this is a good habit to keep in. Every time you modify an altitude, press out select right after it. That's a good habit to keep. You always have to do both. Um, otherwise, if you do not press out select, your aircraft will not level off. It will just fly through the altitude. It's a good habit to always have both in mind. When doing one, you have to do the other. Otherwise, you're not done with the altitude. Um, I, met, I forgot to reset this again. There we go. Okay. The next thing um, I will also do is set the heading um, for a, he a runway heading. Our runway heading is 023, so I'm going to set that in as well. There we go. There's really nothing else we need to do uh, here. If you messed up, just press standby and we'll reset everything. Of course, HLI select should be on your side because you're the pilot flying. So 
That is fine. Yon Demper is also one. That's all you do with the FCU. Once you're done with the FCU, you've got I for clearance and all that stuff. You can now do a PA announcement. Just go to PA. Press PA. And you can then welcome the passengers on board by pressing the welcome button. Folks on the flight deck, this is your captain. Welcome on board. I'd like to remind you to please keep your seatbelts fastened. Uh, sit back, relax, enjoy the flight. We'll have you on your way shortly. And then head back to Interphone to reset. At 7 minutes, which is in about 2 minutes, we can expect to get the load sheet and you just have to respond by saying thank you or okay thanks or thanks. Once we get the load sheet, we'll then do our FMS stuff. So we'll program our fuel page, which is very easy. We'll cross fill that to or to the second FMC. And then we're pretty much already ready to go. We'll do the originating, or sorry, the 24 hour system check checklist. And um, yeah, that's very, uh, very simple from now on. Hi guys, here's the load sheet for you. Thanks. So we've said thanks, we've got a load sheet, which means we can now go to the FMC and put in the information from the load sheet into the fuel page. Very self-explanatory stuff. In the real world, you really just put in zero fuel weight and then all the fuel information and we'll calculate your gross weight already. Um, so let's do that. Our zero fuel weight today, we know via our panel here is 24,002. So we'll put 24,002, enter that in. Next, we put in our fuel information. So, um, here, we'll check the flight plan. You'll see that our alternate fuel is to Echo November. November Oscar will be 353 kilograms. Our hold fuel is 429, and we don't have any extra fuel today in case of weather. So our total reserve, as you can see, is 782. Once you get reach the fuel on board, um, put in the fuel amount i'm gonna go to menu and i want to do it by tank so i'm gonna put enter turn and so when i press this now i can enter it by tank so i'm gonna put one one so just put in the amount of fuel that you have on board and you return so we have 22,000 pounds or sorry kilograms on board that will then calculate your gross weight for you and with that gross weight we will then do our v-speed calculations This is basically all you have to do with the FMS. We now go to data, cross fill, and we'll cross fill the, F, uh, the fuel information on this side as well. Head back to flight plan. And uh, what we will do is we'll do the 24 hour system check checklist. And here's where it is very helpful to know what you need to say. Although in this checklist, it is fairly simple. 24 hour systems check checklist. Engine fire detection. Test. APU fire detection. Test. Baggage smoke warning aft and forward. Test. Stall warning test one and two. Test. ADC one and two. Test. Auto feather. Test. Chipless TCAS. Test. PA system. Test. Trims. Test. 24 hour system checks complete. As you can see, that checklist is very simple. All you have to say is test for everything you've tested, and it will recognize it. Now we do our V-speed calculations since we've got our gross weight. And the first thing we will do is we're going to set this to MDA. And uh, before we do that, actually, we'll set uh, we'll set our MDA. So before we do our V-speed, we'll set our MDA. And you need to do this. Even uh, FS crew requires you to do this. It is a requirement, um, so it knows when you're, you're at 1,000 feet above ground. So just set this MDA to your current elevation. Very simple, 520, and then set plus 1,000, so 1,520. So you want to set this to 1,000 feet AGL. Next, we need to set our V-speeds, and uh, though they aren't, uh, you know, fleshed out as much, there is a, a nice uh, PDF that Majestic has provided for takeoff speeds, so we can now take a look at this. Um, first, let's check our, I forgot to do this, check our gross weight which is 26,200 kilograms and so we'll go back to the uh, to the this so we know it's around 26,000 and so based off of this weight we're gonna use these uh, these are these uh, values so our 
temperature as at or below 20 degrees Celsius, which is true. Our elevation is at zero. And so 26,000, zero is V speeds of 124, 124, and 127. V1 is always the same as V rotate. Um, then we need to check the same thing here for V fry. So flaps 5 V fry, 26,000 kilograms is 137. And then V climb is normally always V2 plus 20, but we're going to use this value as uh, of 148. So we're going to put that in. So we said uh, 124, 124, 127. Uh, 137 and 148 so it could be 137 as well uh, 147 I mean all right the V speeds are set once the V speeds are set and you're expecting a departure delay you can then do another PA um, and tell them hey uh, we're going to be delayed a little bit because of either ATC or weather or because of something else. Um, okay, once you're ready, um, we'll then see the doors close. Once you see the doors close, you can then go to the NAV display because we now know that the doors are closed and good to go. And once that is checked, we can then do our before start flows. To start the before start flows, you request the before start checklist. You and the FO will do your flows, and then once the FO is ready, um, you will then go through the checklist. To make our lives a bit easier, because this is a tutorial, and I want to explain things that we're doing, it might take a little bit more time, I might not be as fast as he is. So I'm going to do my flows first, and then I'm going to request the before start checklist. The flows that we need to do when we request the before start checklist are checking that the escape hatch is closed. Alright guys, everyone's seated. We're all buttoned up and ready to go in the back. Thanks. If you need anything, just let me know. We then check our circuit breakers again, make sure that they're good to go, which they are. Check our hydraulic number 3. We'll turn that on and verify that the pressure is around 3000 psi it is. You want to check that your emergency brake is at least 500 psi, which it is. It's at around 3,000. Nose boost steering should be off. Our power levers should be disc and our fuel uh, condition levers should be fuel off. And then he should start the checklist. Before start checklist. Stand by. So he's now doing his stuff and then once he's ready he'll go through the checklist. Bridge and aging checks flow. Complete. Complete. Gear pins. Stowed. Pre-flight checks. Complete. Complete. External power APU voltage. On. Checked. 27 volts. Circuit breakers. Checked. Checked. Escape hatch. Closed. Nose wheel steering. Off. Flight guidance control panel. Set. Fuel quantity. Two. Two. Zero. Two. Kilograms on board. Two two zero zero kilograms required. Hydraulic number three pressure. Check three thousand psi. Checked three thousand psi. Three thousand psi. Emergency brake pressure. Park checked. Power levers. Disc. Condition levers. Fuel off. Emergency light switch. Arm. Fasten belt switch. On. On. Departure briefing. Complete. Complete. Before start checklist complete. That's the before start checklist. And you notice that at one minute the FA asked you or notified you that the cabin is ready and all you have to do is respond to that uh, with thanks. Again, uh, the FA will automatically make you check the door page and that is checked so we'll go back to nav and the doors are closed.